Lost wax casting is a multifaceted process that has been practiced for over an estimated 5,000 years. It is used to create metal works of art that can range from the eloquent and beautiful to the monstrous and unseemly. And of course, everything in between. The Mal Wood Foundry in Melbourne's northern suburb Reservoir is a highly respected proprietor of such artworks. And artists from around the country turn over their sculptures to have them recreated in beautiful bronze. Beautiful. Thank you. The first step is to create a mould of the original piece made from silicon rubber. This is backed with fiberglass which hardens to create a mould with an exact negative of the original model on the inside. This is then used to make a hollow wax. The wax is then cleaned up removing any seam lines. A wax cup is added giving the molten bronze a point of entry. It is then sprued to create paths for the molten metal to flow into the mould and for air to escape. It is then time to create a ceramic shell mould. The wax sculpture is covered in refractory slurry. On a piece as detailed as this, extra care must be taken to ensure that the slurry goes into every crevice. After this, it is covered in sand and left to dry. This process is repeated up to eight times to create a ceramic shell mould thick enough to withstand the molten bronze. The shell is then placed in a kiln where the wax is melted out and the ceramic is fired. On a larger model, a different process is used. Solid investment moulds are made with a mixture of plaster and ontocar. Fiberglass is used to strengthen the first few layers and then it's built up to at least 100 mil thick over the wax. After the wax is melted out, the moulds are wrapped. This is to help support them against the weight of the metal that will fill them. Now, they're ready for the pour. Unused bronze is recycled back into ingots for the next pour. Much like the wax, the bronze cools and creates a near-perfect replica of the original model. After the removal of excess metal, the piece is blasted with high-pressure sand. This cleans the piece and removes any casting marks. Nail holes are welded up, rough edges are ground down, and, depending on the size of the piece, it may need to be welded together. Pneumatic tools are used to get rid of imperfections, known as flashing, and to buff the metal. Once cleaned, the statue undergoes treatment, then patination. This is a process that uses heat and chemicals to colour the metal.
After it has been coloured and treated, it's finished and ready for installation. And there you have it, an ancient practice that is still in use today, turning the malleable artworks of talented artists around the world into shining bronze, to be looked upon and admired for centuries to come.